Hey kids, it's Miss Sasha. Welcome back to art class today. I'm super excited to be here. Today we're going to talk about colonial people and the jobs that they do at home to keep things running smoothly in the colonial times. We'll discuss the importance of corn and its many uses in and around the home. We're going to use warm and cool colors to draw corn on the cob and the husk. In colonial times, most of the things needed for survival had to be made at home. The family had to work hard every day so that they had the things that they needed for survival for the entire year. That's a lot of work. Corn was the most important crop in colonial America. Native Americans taught them how to grow this corn. Over time, they began to grow other staple crops such as wheat, rice, barley, oats, pumpkins, beans, squash, all kinds of things. But remember, corn was the most important crop, mostly because it could be used in so many different ways. The whole family had to help. Everybody had jobs and responsibilities, and everybody's jobs and responsibilities were equally important for making the household run super smoothly. The men worked outside on the farm and in the fields. During the spring, they would be tilling and planting all the fields and the crops for the whole year, and most likely corn was included in that. They had to do all the work by hand or with maybe the help of an ox or a horse to plow the fields. The rest of the time, they tended to the fields. They took care of the livestock, which is the animals, the horses, the cows, the sheep, the pigs. They chopped firewood because when winter came, they had to have that all ready. They fixed the fences so that the animals couldn't escape. They repaired the house. Maybe there was a leak in the roof. Maybe one of the windows needed to be fixed. All those things. There was always more work to do around the homestead. The women, they worked every bit as hard as the men. They prepared all the meals. They baked all the bread and they used cornmeal. Hmm. They used grindstones, which were two stones that they used to crush the wheat or the corn down to make flour and cornmeal. They sewed and mended all the clothing. They made candles so they could see at night. They managed the garden. Maybe the vegetables needed tending to. Uh, maybe they needed to weed the garden. Who knows? They prepared all the food for the winter, so they had to put things away so that all year long they had other things to eat. They wove cloth and they raised the children. Do you think the children did any work? Well, of course they did. Most of the children worked as soon as they were old enough to be helpful. The boys helped the father with his work and the girls helped their mother. This way they could learn all the skills they needed for when they were grown up. The kids did lots and lots of chores. They had to help the family. They had to keep things running smoothly in those colonial times. They would take care of the animals. Maybe they would feed them. Maybe they would give them fresh water. They would fetch firewood and water. What does that mean? Fetch. Something you would do with your dog, right? They would bring a ball back. Well, the kids had to do that with the firewood. They had to go get the freshly chopped firewood that dad had just cut down. They'd have to haul it all the way back to the house, line it up close to the house and get ready for the winter. They'd have to go get water so mom would have things to uh, make the bread with or clean the dishes. And dad would need that in order for the animals, right? Maybe he had to clean off his tools. Who knows? They just needed all that water. And they helped dad to take care of the crops and they help mom to cook and sew. So, do you do chores? Hmm? You should be doing some chores. You too have to help your house run smoothly. Can you maybe look at one of your neighbors and tell them one of the things that you do every day to help mom or dad make the house run smoothly? Maybe look to your right, look to your left. Hmm. When I was a kid, I had to set the table and my brother had to clear the table at the end of dinner. That helped our house run smoothly. Mom was cooking dinner, dad was gathering things for the dinner, and we were helping by setting the table and clearing the table. If we had pets, we had to wash the dog, we might have had to give the cat its medicine, you never know. What are your chores? 
Are there chores that you can do in the classroom to help your classroom teacher keep the classroom running smoothly? Hmm. Aren't some of you maybe the line leader? Are some of you the person who passes the trash around to, uh, so the kids don't have to move around the classroom? How about the person who passes out the paper or the pencils? I'm sure there's many chores within your classroom that helps your teacher keep the classroom to run smoothly, right? So this is the corn. It's sometimes called Indian corn or flint corn or even sometimes called calico corn. It's funny, a calico cat is made up of three different colors. So this corn has lots of different colors. Look at this corn over here, all the colors of the rainbow. This right here is a picture of someone who is preparing the corn, right? To eat, maybe to keep all these other pieces that we'll talk about in a minute, right? So the supplies you're gonna need today are gonna be two pieces of white paper, markers, and crayons. Now is a good time to pause the video, get your papers all together, and I'll be right back with you. Good, now that you've gathered all your supplies, go ahead and put them in front of you. We're going to get our first piece of paper right here. We're gonna practice a few things to prepare us for drawing our corn, all right? Go ahead and get a marker, any color that you want. And I want you to draw a straight line or a vertical line down the middle of your paper. Perfect. At the top, I want you to draw like a slightly curved line. Got it? and go down and around that long line and back up to the top. Perfect. I want you to go ahead and make one line on both sides of the first line that we drew. Perfect. In each of these rows, you're gonna stay inside of the line and you're gonna draw kind of a shape, maybe circle, maybe a little bit square. And as you make your way down, your shapes are going to get much smaller. We're just practicing for our main piece in a minute. I'm getting smaller and smaller all the way to the bottom. And you're gonna go ahead and repeat that in the last two sections. Some of mine touch, some of them don't. I'm gonna try not to make them touch, give them a little bit of space, right? Look, it starts to look like these rows of corn, right? I'll give you a minute to finish filling in your corn cob. Perfect. Good job. Um, this lady, she's shucking this corn. I want to show you this picture over here. This is an old black and white picture, and this is someone in the fields of corn, and he's being helped with the ox or the horse to pull his plow through the field. And this picture is, a, is the rows of corn that has been planted. It's a lot easier for the um, farmer to plow his corn if he's not walking in a random pattern, right? He's going straight up and down the rows of corn, okay? Perfect. I'm gonna take this picture away. Go ahead and put your markers down. I'm gonna take this picture out the way. I'm gonna show you what our final piece is going to be. We're gonna have two pieces of corn, two corn on the cob, and this is the corn husk. And we're gonna be talking about warm and cool colors. Okay, to do our um, corn. All right, get your paper in front of you. All right, here is our new paper. The second piece of paper that you have, I want you to go ahead and make it vertical in front of you or tall and fold the bottom up to meet the corners and crease that paper. Okay, and then open it back up. And if you turn your paper, and you go from the bottom to the top, fold it up, 
crease the paper, open it back up, and put it vertical again in front of you. We'll be ready to go, okay? All right, you all ready? All right, I'm gonna show you this picture right here. This is warm and cool colors. So one half of our paper is gonna be the warm colors. Warm colors are reds, yellows, and oranges. They remind me of things that are warm or hot, right? Like a hot red pepper or an orange flame from a campfire. How about the yellow burning sun, right? Got that? And the cool colors over here, they remind me of like ice or frost or cold, wet grass, right? Ice cubes, purple mountains. If you were go, go in maybe Alaska or even in Utah or someplace where they have tall mountains in the winter. And if you look, we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. It's all the colors of the rainbow. And half is warm and the other half are the cool colors, right? I think that's really neat how if you look at a color wheel, it'll be half and half warm and cool. And these are, these colors, there's other colors in between all of these that are blends of these, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our horn. Having some technical difficulties here. All right, we're gonna do one at a time. The first thing I want you to do is get your black marker, okay? Black. On one side of our paper, you see where that fold is, the crease? Right above that fold, I want you to put a slightly curved line above that fold. And our corn on the cob is gonna go all the way to the bottom. Okay, watch. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna curve all the way down and right back up. Got it? That's our cob. That's the cob part of the corn on the cob. All right, and this is the husks. And they're kind of wavy lines that kind of swoop up. So watch, they go almost all the way to the top. I just kind of curve up and back down. Up and back down. Over here. And then I might put a few in the middle by just doing a triangle. Maybe I have one that's a little bent on the side. Maybe this guy folds over. They don't go past that center line too far. We have to save room for the other corn, right? The townspeople did not waste any part of the corn. Every part of the ear of corn was used. Corn was used to feed both people and the livestock. Livestock meaning the animals, right? Once the corn was harvested, the corn was shelled or shucked off the cob. And that's the part that we eat is the, corn, is the kernels off of the corn on the cob. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll make a little line down the middle, just like we did on our practice. One on the right and one on the left, okay? And staying with your black crate, with your black marker, go ahead and make your squares in the space or your circles. If it's easier for you to make circles, look, I'll do a few circles. Maybe some squares, maybe some circles, all the way down your corn on the cob. Perfect. That's our first corn cob. I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna turn it upside down so I can do my other corn. All right, go ahead and grab your brown marker. We're gonna do the same thing we did on this side. Okay, here we go. Right at the crease, do a curved line. What's the next thing that we do? The husks? No. The corn, all the way to the bottom of the paper, all the way down, curve back up. You got it? All right, and we're gonna do the husks. They kinda of go up and down. And down, almost to the top, up and down, and some in the middle. Maybe this one bends over. Perfect. Okay, 
We're going to make the line in the middle. One line on each side. What's the next thing that we do? We put the little squares or circles in the corner on the cob. They get smaller as it goes down. You're kind of filling your space, right? Okay, I'll give you a minute to do that. Um, the cobs were not discarded, that's this. So after they shucked all the kernels off the cobs, they didn't throw that away. They used, like I said, everything. They would have them, they would let them get dried out and then they would use them for bottle stoppers. They would use them for scrub brushes. They would use it to start a fire because they were easy to light. And they were used for fuel for smoking their meats, right? So if their meats needed to be heated, they would light a bunch of corn cobs, cover the meat up, and they would smoke their meats, right? The corn stalk, this is the corn stalk, the part that they take the corn and the husks off from. They were also dried out and they were used for poles. They were used for crops, for walking sticks, and also kindling for the fire. They didn't waste anything. The husks, this part, um, are used to make, to weave mats, to make pillows and mattresses. So they would let this dry out and they would put it into the fabric that the mom had sewed and make a pillow or a mattress. Might not be as soft as our mattresses are these days, right? Okay, let's start with this, uh, the brown corn on the cob. Go ahead and get your warm colors, which are gonna be red, orange, and yellow, your crayons. And we're gonna go ahead and start filling in these um, shapes right here. So look, I did my red. I filled a few of them in solid colors, right? Go ahead and fill them in. You can do half, half of a little kernel. And while you have your red, Go ahead and maybe color some of your husks. Warm colors, right? Things that make us feel warm like fires. Hot chili peppers. The hot burning sun, right? Good, I filled in some of mine with red. When you have a few of them filled in, you can go ahead and get your orange. Do the same thing. You can color in the other half of, of the ones that you did partially red. Fill in some orange, some of your husks. Good. Half of them with orange. Maybe you want to color the whole rest of this husk with orange. Perfect. And then maybe yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and do some yellow. I'm not gonna fill them all in just yet. I'm gonna get some of them. If we have time at the end, we can go ahead and add the rest of it. Perfect. All right, I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and, and color some of those in. You don't have to fill the whole thing in yet, okay? Um, let's see, the husks were also used to make corn husk dolls. They made those all the time. Women braided the husk and made ropes and twine, and they co coiled them around to make containers and mats. They shredded the husks for kindling and for filling up, like I said, their mattresses, right? Um, let's go ahead now and get your cool colors. Crayons, blue, green, and purple, right? And I'm just going to do one like this. Go ahead and do some purple. You can turn it around if you'd like. Fill in some of them all the way. Fill in some of your husk. These are our cool colors. Things like snowflakes and snowballs. Things like purple mountains, right? Ice cubes, do a little purple, do a little blue. Good job. Half of mine are blue. And how about
got some green. Cold grass. If you ever go sit on the grass to cool you down, right? Perfect. Keep going. Keep filling it in until all of your kernels are completely colored in. If I have purple and blue on this one, I might want to add a little bit of green until I fill it all in. Now, the husks aren't all these crazy colors, warm and cool colors, right? But we're using our imagination to finish our corn and we're looking at these up here and noticing that they're all these different colors depending upon where or how it was grown. And we're talking about warm and cool colors to fill it in. Here I'm still filling in, I'm still filling it in. When you think you've got it all filled in on the cool colored corn, you can go ahead and fill in the rest of it with maybe the black crayon, right? And then you've filled in the background. You can use a black marker, you can use a black crayon to kind of fill in around your, your kernels. until it's all done. You don't have to fill in every single white space, just around your little kernels. See, I'm kind of leaving some white spaces and that's okay. Oh, I noticed I missed a kernel. I can always go back and fill it in. Look, little blue. Cool colored. And then for my warm colors, I do the same thing. Finish filling it all in with your warm colored crayons. Ooh, I missed this one. Have to go back and get this one. Remember if there's half. Perfect. Here, give you a minute to do that. When you think you've got all of your kernels filled in, you can either color it in with the brown crayon or the brown marker all around your kernels to complete your warm colored corn. We keep working on it. Um, farms were really far away from each other. They lived in a rural community, right? So you they couldn't really rely on their neighbors or stores to get the things that they needed. So they had to make everything at home, right? So if you needed food to eat or water to drink for cooking, for cleaning, they had to heat everything up with a fire. Right? If you wanted to wash your clothes, you had to use the water that you gathered or that you fetched, right? So remember, there was also no electricity. So they didn't have, they couldn't just flip a switch and turn on the lights or open up the refrigerator and grab cold food out, right? So they had to make their own candles. So when it was dark at night, they could light the candles, right? They didn't have flashlights or headlamps, right? There were no malls where they could go shopping for clothing, right? So they had to make all their own clothing. They had to make all their own bedding. Everything had to be done by hand or with their hands or created with their hands, right? So let's think about this. They had no air conditioning. So when it was hot outside, they had to open all of their windows, right? They had to use fans to keep themselves cooled off. Um, in the winter time, there was no heat. 
So all the wood that the kids would gather when they were doing their chores is what they would use to heat the house. They would wanna stay next to the hearth or the fireplace, right? And that was like the most important spot to sit when it was cold. It provided all the heat for the entire house. You wanted to get a good spot there. They didn't have a TV. They didn't have a radio. They had to entertain themselves, right? They had to play games that they made up outside in their yard. They had to keep themselves busy. They didn't have an iPad or an iPhone, right? They did other fun things. They may maybe play jump rope or jacks or um, kick the can. Can you imagine? That's a game that they would play, kick the can. Right? So there were no grocery stores. They couldn't just say, hey, mom, it's time for us to go to the grocery store and get some fruit or get some vegetables. They didn't have um, chocolate cake and cookies. They had to make all of that. So all the work that they did all day and every day provided things that they needed for that day, for the next month, and for the whole entire year. So they were busy every day. They didn't get to have time to lay around and be lazy they had to keep working all right so go ahead and complete color coloring up your warm and cool corn if you don't get to finish it now that's fine you can always finish it later you can add things to the background you can color the background right so today was great today we learned all about the colonial people and the jobs that they had to do to keep their home and their things running smoothly, right? We discussed the importance of corn and its many uses in and around the home. We used warm and cool colors to draw corn on the cob and husks. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you next week.